What's up, I'm Ejem and welcome back to my channel. One of the best ways user products can help increase user engagement is with the use of email marketing. Whether it's after creating an account, forgetting your password, or some status update, it's always great to get a little email updating you on the status of your account. So when it came to the Evo API, I wanted to see how I can use emails to help increase user engagement, whether it's an admin, an editor, or a regular user. So for this video, I'm gonna show you how I use the SendGrid API to send out emails to regular users. And then on top of that, I'm gonna show you how I automate scheduled emails so you can get emails on a weekly basis. So before we get into all the code, let's first have a quick high level overview of what the SendGrid API is. So SendGrid is a product that's created by Twilio that makes it so much easier for developers to send out emails from their applications. So everything from sending out email templates using dynamic data and sending out those emails is super easy inside of the SendGrid platform. So I'm gonna walk you through that environment right now. So when you create an account with SendGrid, you can go to app.sendgrid.com and it's gonna have this whole platform for you that makes it so much easier to create emails and send them out. So when you create an account and log into the platform, you're gonna see this dashboard that has some high level stats. But I think my favorite part is the email API section. There's two sections, the first being the dynamic templates. This is where you can define the look of each email that you wanna send out. And then on top of that, there's the integration guide that walks you through very high level, depending on the programming language that you're using, um, how to use the API for your project. So when I click web API, I can choose my language and I use Node.js for the API itself. So it's going to bring up this really quick guide to show me how I can get my SendGrid API, save it in an environment variable, and after that, install the SendGrid NPM package. And then it's gonna show me a quick snippet of how I can actually send out one of my templates. So SendGrid makes it extremely easy to streamline the process of creating email templates and then sending them out to users. So now I'm gonna show you how I use the API inside of Ebo API. So here we're in the Ebo API project and we're in config.js. You can see on line six that I'm creating a new object called sgmail for SendGrid mail. And I'm importing the npm package after I've called the command yarn add sendgrid forward slash mail. I make a quick check to see if I'm not in a build environment, meaning if I'm in a production environment or a development environment or even a testing environment, I'll import this package. But if I'm not in that environment, I'm just going to return back null. And then towards the bottom of the file, I have a couple of sendgrid uh, secret tokens that I want to use for this project. First being the API key itself, and then a couple of email templates that help identify which template I actually want to send out when I call my SendGrid API send email functions. So I define all of these constants and then on line 60, I check to see if the SG mail object from above exists or not. If it does exist, then I'm going to set my API key with the API key that I got from my developer's dashboard. So this config file runs at the very beginning of the application. So if all goes well, then we won't get any errors and we'll be able to send out actual emails to our users. So now what we want to do is actually start calling some functions to send out emails. So inside the project, we have an email controllers file, which is responsible for defining all the functions that will get called to send emails to our users. So if we take a closer look, we can see a couple of functions like send approved email, send denied email, and send merged email, which are functions that are responsible for actually sending emails to specific users. So for send approved email, for example, it takes a data object and then it passes it into our construct message function, which is responsible for creating a message object that we actually then want to send the email with. So if we take a closer look at the construct message function, we can see that it's taking in our message fields and it's adding a couple of extra keys to that object. For example, it's adding the from key where it's specifying the email that we want to send from and the name that we want to associate with that email. So when it pops up in your inbox, you can see that it's gonna come from the specific name. We also apply the reply to key to make it easier for people to know how they can reply back to this email. And then also personalizations, which makes it really easy for us to define BCC. So not every recipient knows the other recipients. So once we call construct message, we get that special message object, and then we use that message object to actually send our email. Send email is another helper function that does some conditional logic. First, it checks to see if it's not in a testing environment. If it's not in a testing environment, then it's actually going to try to send the email using the message object that we generated. If all goes right, then we'll handle the cases as expected. We'll also catch any errors and then rethrow them depending on the environment that we're in. So the email controller file is responsible for defining these functions that will get called to actually trigger sending out emails. So let's actually see where these functions get called inside of our application code. 
So if we look at send merged email, we can see that we're using it in a couple of different spots. If we go into our words controller file, we can see that we're calling the function inside of another function, which is merged word. So merge word is responsible for taking a word suggestion and merging them into actual word documents. And we want to notify users when this process happens, if their word suggestion is getting merged in as a regular word document. So we go through all this error checking to make sure that the word suggestion is actually a proper word suggestion. And then we merge the word into our database. And after that is a successful process, we check to see if our word suggestion object had a user email attached to it. If the user email key existed on our result object, that basically means that a user's email is associated with that word suggestion. And we want to email that user to update them about their word suggestion and tell them that it's been merged. So we call the send merged email function that we've defined inside of our email controller file. And this function takes in an object with some custom keys. The first is the to key, which specifies who we want to send this email to. And then the second key and all the rest of the keys are actually dynamic data that is going to be injected into our email templates. The first key is suggestion type, which is specifying what type of suggestion was merged into the database. So in our case, it was a word suggestion type. Then we also specify a custom submission link. We're gonna tell the user this is the link where their new word is publicly available. And then on this last line, we're spreading the result object so we can get all the keys that lived on the original word suggestion. That means we can see the word suggestions word, definitions, variations, and everything else. So the idea is whenever a word suggestion or an example suggestion gets merged into a regular word or example document, the user who created the original word or example suggestion will get an email telling them that their word or example has been merged. And this is just a great way to update users on the status of their words and examples. So this flow is always kicked off by user actions, whether it's a merged document or if an approval or a denied happen, the email is then gonna be sent after that trigger. But there's also a case where we wanna automate scheduled emails to make it really easy to update users on the general activity of the platform or the API. So I'm gonna show you how I automated scheduled emails by using an NPM package called Called NodeCron. NodeCron is an NPM package that allows you to define and create cron jobs inside of a node environment. Cron jobs are jobs that you can have like a scheduled time associated with. So if you want something to happen every single minute, hour, day, month, week, any time really, you can specify the timestamp and then the cron job is just going to continuously run on an automated schedule. So I created another file called send email that lives inside of the services directory. And you can see at the very top of this file, I'm importing cron from our node cron npm package. This file is responsible for defining the cron job and then also defining the actual job that's gonna be ran on the schedule. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we can check to see right here on line 71 to 74. At first, I checked to see if I'm in a production environment since while development, I don't wanna be sending out these emails continuously. While I'm inside of a production environment, I'm going to create a new cron job using the schedule function on the cron object. I'm gonna set my cron schedule and then I'm gonna pass in the function that's gonna get called at our schedule time. So cron jobs have a really special syntax where you have five placeholders that define different parts of time. So the first placeholder represents minute, then the second represents an hour. Third is like the day of the month, so the first day or the 30th day. The next placeholder is the month of the year, and then the last placeholder is the day of the week. So one in this case represents Monday. So the thing with cron jobs is that they are set using the UTC time zone. So if I wanted something to run at 12 a.m. Pacific time, I'd have to do a little bit of time zone conversion to make sure that it's running at the time that I really want it to run. So I defined my cron tab schedule to run every Monday at 6 a.m. Pacific time. So the one represents Monday, and then I had to do some time zone conversion. So the 14th hour in UTC time is the sixth hour in Pacific time. If you're starting to write more cron tasks and you're not too familiar with the syntax, there's this great website called crontab.guru that makes it really easy for you to play around with different schedules ruling notations. So if I type in the current cron schedule that I have right now, 0, 14, and 1, that's going to tell me that my cron job is going to run every Monday on the 14th hour in UTC time. So now that we've defined our cron tab schedule, we actually have the function that we pass in to get called every Monday. That function is send email job, which is this slightly larger function. What's happening inside of this function is first we're defining a list of user emails that we want to send to every single Monday. Depending on the environment, I might have some hard-coded emails, 
but usually in production, the user emails array is going to start off as empty. After that, I want to find all the users in my database that are editors, mergers, and admins, since this is a newsletter that's targeted towards them. And then once I do that, I do some cleaning on that list of emails to make sure that user emails just includes the emails that I actually want. So then on line 46, I check to see if the user's email length is greater than zero. That means I have emails to send to. Inside of this if block, I want to grab all the merge words and examples from this past week. Then I construct my email data object, which defines the to key, which is an array of all the emails I want to send to. And then I have a couple of keys for dynamic data that I want to inject inside of my email template. So I have my merged words, which is the number of merged words from this past week, along with my merged examples, which is the total number of merged examples from this past week. And I also define the start date and the end date of this week. So what I'm saying here is I want to get the start date of this week, which was probably like Monday, and then the end date, which would be Sunday. So once I created my email data object, I'm going to pass it inside of my send merge stats function, which I created inside of my email controllers file. I wait for the async function to resolve and then I define my success message and I pass it into my utils function handle final message. So if everything goes right, I should get an email every single Monday at 6 a.m. And I can show you what the email looks like right now. So this is the first email that I've ever sent out, any automated email that I sent out. So bear with me when it comes to design. But other than that, the email is really straightforward. It has a title and a little subheader saying here's the progress that's been made on enhancing the Eagle API within the past week. And then after that, you can start to see some more dynamic data. For example, we can see our start date and our end date that was passed into our email data object. And then we're also rendering the total number of words and examples that were merged inside of the database. And lastly, I pass in a link to this button that takes the recipient of this email back to the editor's platform to make more edits. So this is definitely a first version, first iteration of automated emails that get sent out to mergers, editors, and admins for the Evo API. I think in the future, I definitely want to make it look nicer. It's easier on the eyes, but for now, it's really helpful to get a high level overview of the status and the progress that's being made inside of the API. So that's how the Evo API uses SendGrid to send out user triggered emails or automated emails. If you have any questions about SendGrid or how and why I set up the project in such a way that I did, you can leave your questions down in the comment section below. I would love to answer all of them. I'm also on Twitter where you can send me a DM, ask me questions there. You can also request different videos. You can talk about web development, JavaScript, or anything in between. Also, if you want to contribute to the Evo API project, there's a link in the description box below. You can open up PRs, create issues, you can have general conversations about the development process for the project. I'm always working on it, so feel free to ask me any type of questions. With all of that, I will see you all in the next one.